Hi, let's take a look at an example with code of how Python can do parsing of human languages. We're going to use a package called NLTK and we're going to write context-free grammar rules to get the parsing of sentences like Dave likes pizza, Dave drinks coffee, and the professor likes to eat pineapple pizza. So let's see how we can do this. I am, and obviously this code is going to be in your canvas. I'm going to import the NLTK package, which is the one that has um, the instructions for parsing. You can look uh, into them here. Here I have a function called getTree, which I wrote. In summary, it does um, a couple of things. First, it gets the phrase to be parsed as a string, the grammar, the CFG grammar that you want to use for the parsing. It has a variable here, square brackets, for whether you want your parsed output to be brackets or parentheses. So the default for Python is to give you parentheses, but I want to use brackets because we can then we can use sites like this one from Miles Shang, the syntax tree generator, to get a drawing of the tree. Because we could understand them like this, but I feel like they're easier to understand if we draw them like a little syntax tree. So this function here gets the, free you want, uh, the phrase you want to parse, the grammar. It splits the phrase into tokens, so separated by spaces. It creates an object called a parser with a recursive descent parser based on the grammar that you created on the CFG rules that you created. And then it parses the sentence. And both in human in, and in human languages, you can have more than one parsing. These are structural ambiguities. We're going to study them later in the week. So this tells you for every possible parsing tree that you found after you parsed the sentence, put the tree in the in here in the variable t. And this is a variable that's going to get returned. It's going to be a string like this with the parsing with, as you can see, the non-terminals and the terminals written in this format. It has something here. Uh, just if you want brackets, replace the parentheses for brackets. So let's prep this one and the brackets. So let's get started. We have an empty grammar for English and we have the sentence Dave's, Dave likes pizza. So what do we need to do? The first thing we would need to do is try to figure out what the structure is like, what the general sentence of the structure of the sentence. This, uh, this one, Dave likes pizza, is composed of a noun phrase, Dave, and a verbal phrase. What does Dave do? He likes pizza. The verbal phrase is made up of a verb, likes, and then a noun phrase, pizza. A noun phrase is composed of a single noun in this example. So Dave is a noun phrase, pizza is a noun phrase. We, we have them clustered, these two, likes pizza, into a verb phrase. And we have this noun phrase and this verb phrase combined into a sentence. So these are the non-terminals that describe the structure of the tree. We also need terminals. So for example, a noun should have Dave and pizza as members, as terminals, and verbs need to include likes. So let's give that a try. Mm -hmm. It compiles. As you can see here, we have a uh, context-free grammar with the rules that a sentence in English is composed of a noun phrase and a verb phrase. A verb phrase is composed of a verb and a noun phrase. A noun phrase is composed of nouns. And the nouns we can have are Dave 
or pizza, and likes. Let's see if it works. And it did. Here, we just asked it to print the sentence and then to get the tree for Dave's, Dave likes pizza with the English CFG grammar that we just made. As you can see, it's called Grammar English and uh, square brackets one so that we get, get the square brackets. I'm going to copy paste that here. There we go. And let's look at what happened. We have a sentence that has, has a noun phrase with a noun, Dave, and a verb phrase that has a verb, likes, and a noun phrase with a noun, pizza. So what does Dave do? Dave likes pizza. What does he like? Pizza. If you look at it in the bracket form, you'll see that this is a sentence. It starts with this bracket and ends with this one which contains an NP, which contains an N, which is Dave. Then it contains a VP, which contains a V. Let me just scroll so we can have the view of the rules. Here are the rules. So this is an entire VP, like we have here, that contains a V, which is likes, and we have an NP, which has an N, which is pizza. And sure enough, I think it's easier to understand it in the graphic form. But this is what the NLTK parser will return to you. I'm going to bring this one down so I can have it together with the second example. So Dave likes pizza. Here we have another sentence. Dave drinks coffee. As you can see here, we already know this kind of sentence. This sentence is a noun phrase, Dave, plus a verb phrase. What does Dave do? He drinks coffee. And what is this verb phrase? It's the verb drinks and the noun phrase coffee. So we already have the structure for this. We need to add the terminals because the computer doesn't know yet that coffee is a noun and that drinks is a verb. So we have added new terminals to noun and to, v and to verb, but we've kept the structure of the grammar, the non-terminals, intact. Let's rerun it. So we actualize, uh, so, um, so we have again the variable grammar English with all the changes. And let's run this one. Woo! We get the tree for Dave drinks coffee and we get the Dave drinks coffee. Let's put it here. Mm -hmm. the, the sentence Dave drinks coffee is composed of the noun phrase Dave, the verb phrase drinks coffee. So what does Dave do? Drinks coffee. What does he drink? Coffee. That worked pretty well. I'm going to make this third one fail so that you can see how uh, it fails, what the error message is. I'm going to run it without updating the grammar. And sure enough, it says that I am missing things. The grammar does not cover some of the input words. I walk. So we need to provide uh, new non-terminals. Let's bring this one here. Mm -hmm. So we need, let's do B and C first. We need to add a new verb, which is walk. Mm -hmm. And we need to add a noun called I. I know a noun is, uh, no I is actually a pronoun. However, it behaves like a noun phrase. So just to simplify this exercise, I'm going to say that I is a noun because it behaves like one. It can be the subject of a sentence, for example. So the error told me that I was missing I and walk. Let's run the grammar again and let's run it and see what happens. Interestingly, it prints the sentence, but then this gives me nothing. It, the parsing is empty. And it's empty because even though I gave it the correct terminals, it, it has a non-terminal that it needs. This is because the only type of sentence that I know is a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. And when you have I walk, you have a subject noun phrase I, a verb walk 
and you don't have anything else. Um, you're, the only VP that we have is verb noun phrase. So we do not know a VP that is only a verb. What we need to do is add a second alternative for what a VP can be. So a VP in English can be a verb and a noun phrase like likes pizza, or it can be a single verb like walk. Let's rerun the grammar. Let's rerun this. And now we have a parse. I walk. Let's put it here. I walk. You have a sentence that has, and let me get the rules. You have a sentence that has an NP, I, and a VP with just one verb, walk. So what is I doing? It's sister note, walk. Who is doing the walk? It's sister note, I. As you can see, the parsing gives us very rich information about the relationship between words. Who is doing the action? What is the uh, subject doing? And so forth. So we have here a simple English grammar for our three toy sentences. Let's keep on going. The fourth sentence is, the professor likes pineapple pizza. So we need to do a few things here. First, um, we, need to we need to think of what we're going to do about this, the professor. This is a noun phrase, but as we have seen here, we only know one type of noun phrase, a noun. So we might need to expand our definition of a noun phrase is to include the terminer and noun. And we're gonna have to create a new category called the terminer whoop, that includes the word the. So we have expanded our definition of what a noun phrase is so that it can be a noun or an, a, a determiner and a noun, the professor. We created a new category called determiner, which includes the word the. And we can add the noun professor to the nouns. So now we can, account, we can account for this noun phrase here, the professor. I need to include professor, I need to include pineapple, Let's do one B and C. So uh, I need to expand the noun phrase rule so that it has the terminer and the noun, and I've done that. I need to create a determiner non-terminal, which is this one, which has the terminal the, and I need to add another noun because we have it here, pineapple. Let's try to run it. Mm -hmm. And let's try to run this. Ooh, I'm missing something. I wonder what does not cover some of the input words. So um, let's try that again. Why is it saying that? It's probably saying that because I am missing a rule. As you can see here, oh, and my beautiful formatting has been destroyed by the markdown. We need to expand the noun phrase so that it takes a kind of noun phrase that is a noun and a noun. Pineapple pizza. We have many of these in English. Hot dog, uh, white house. Um, we have many noun phrases that are one noun and the other. Ice cream, for example. So we're going to expand our definition of noun phrase to include the noun noun combination so that it can do pineapple pizza. Let's run this and hopefully it will produce a parsing. So let me show you what we got. Wait. There we go. As you can see from the rules that we have here, we have that a sentence is composed of a noun phrase that has a determiner and a noun the professor. And then we have a verbal phrase that has a verb, likes, and a noun phrase, which is composed of a noun and another noun, pineapple pizza. So 
Who likes pineapple pizza? The sister of VP, NP, the professor. What does the professor do? The sister of MP, VP, likes pineapple pizza. What does someone like? This, uh, the sister of V, NP, pineapple pizza. What is pineapple pizza doing? The sister of NP, V, likes. Someone is liking it. So with these rules, we can draw the syntactic tree for the professor likes pizza. And you can analyze the bracketed form um, at your own pace. So let's do our fifth example. The professor likes to eat pe pineapple pizza. Here we have some, here we have a combination of verbs, likes to eat. In English, we call that a compliment phrase it's, or a complimentizer. These are sentences that can serve as direct objects. So I like to eat pizza. I want to swim in the river. What? does some what does the person like to eat pizza what does the person want to swim in the river so these are uh, larger structures that resemble sentences these complement phrases but they are not full sentences you can't just say to eat pizza to swim in the river um, they behave a little bit like noun phrases and then they can be the subjects of sentences to eat pizza is beautiful to swim in the river is beautiful. Um, but they also behave a little bit like full sentences in that they have verbs. I'm sorry, they behave a little bit like verb phrases in that they have verbs and direct objects. Eat pizza, swim in the river. So a complement phrase is a, a structure that has a verb at the beginning and a marker to, for example, and then a direct object and then uh, the direct object of the sentence which is a noun phrase so what do we need we need these rules we need to define something that's going to be called a cp a complement phrase mm -hmm. and it's going to be made up of a complementizer which is the word to and then a verb phrase to eat pizza for example and we now need to create another category comp which is going to have the word to so a cp is to eat pizza or in this case to eat pineapple pizza so we have this um pineapple pizza the professor am i missing any words Let's run it. Oh, I'm missing the word eat as a possible verb. Eat. Mm -hmm. Notice that it failed to produce a parsing. All the words were there, but no parsing came out. And this is because we need to perform an additional step. We now need to tell the computer that a verb phrase in English can either be a verb and a noun, so eat, p uh, I like pizza, or a verb and a complement phrase, like to eat pizza. So this verb phrase is like pizza, want pizza, and this one is like to eat pizza, want to swim in the river. So let's add that and try it again. Yay, it produced the parsing. I remember that this one gets blocked behind the window, so hopefully you'll be able to see it. The professor likes to eat pineapple pizza. So what does the professor do? The sister of NP likes to, the professor likes to eat pizza. What does the professor like? The sister of V to eat pizza. What is the professor eating? The sister of this V, pineapple pizza. 
Who likes to eat pineapple pizza? The sister of this VP, NP, the professor. That's why we do all this parsing, because it allows us to ask questions between the words and to see the relationships between different constituents. This is an example of how a simple context-free grammar in English can help you get parsings of words in English. And it is the beginning of a road towards extraction of knowledge from English words.